no T.O. Do you need a loan right now? I'm the loan arranger, and I can arrange for a loan for $100, $1,000, even $100,000. Need the money for your credit cards, the casino, or to go shopping? No questions asked, because I am the easiest, fastest loan arranger in town. Oh, yeah! CP24 tonight, exiting step three. The Ford government is expected to make an announcement next week on its plan to move ahead in its roadmap to reopening. Getting QR code ready, the province launches the app businesses can use to check vaccine certificates ahead of the full rollout next week. And negative tests needed with the U.S. border reopening to Canadians next month, the feds confirm. You'll still need a negative COVID test to return north of the border. I'm Jackie Crandalls. And I'm Jennifer Shung. This is CP24 Tonight. All classes at a Toronto elementary school are moving online due to a COVID-19 outbreak. Public Health says due to an ongoing COVID-19 investigation, it is recommending that students at Green Home Junior Middle School in Etobicoke be temporarily dismissed from in-person school and activities starting tomorrow. Public Health says it has identified 10 COVID-19 cases and will continue to work with the school community. Close contacts have been modified or notified and are asked to stay home, monitor for symptoms and get tested. The TDSB says all students at Green Home will be moving to remote learning. Public Health also says they have identified more than two cases of COVID-19 linked within Etienne Brule Junior School and Green Home Junior Middle School. They've declared outbreaks at both schools, but only students at Green Home have been dismissed. CTV News Toronto has learned the Ford government is considering further easing of pandemic restrictions. Sources say an announcement about the plan to exit step three of the province's reopening roadmap is expected next week. Leaving the framework would likely mean relaxing indoor capacity limits for businesses like gyms and restaurants, which are currently capped at 50 percent. Ontario's top doctor says he wants to make sure there isn't a spike in cases related to the Thanksgiving weekend before lifting restrictions in settings where proof of vaccination is required. What we see is a phased um, uh, removal of, of domains requiring uh, uh, verification of your immunization as we have very low rates across Ontario. Um, uh, so, so we may not require them in some venues, but still require them in mass gatherings where we have a, a, a large number of people gathering. Um, so so um, we're still reviewing that science and getting the input of our experts, uh, but we do uh, not, not see the whole certification process ending suddenly, but having a phased exit from it over time following data. The Canadian Federation of Independent Business says it's pleased the province is releasing a roadmap to full reopening. A statement reads in part, capacity restrictions on restaurants, gyms, yoga and dance studios and bowling alleys should be eliminated, especially as these businesses have been mandated to admit only fully vaccinated Ontarians. CFIB is counting on the Ontario government to make this change immediately and not add additional delays or thresholds. Every day without being allowed more people is an opportunity missed to help struggling businesses make up for months of lost revenues. Well, the province has just released a new vaccine verification app for businesses and organizations ahead of next week's release of a digital vaccine certificate for individuals. CP24's Mark Liverman joins us live with the details. Mark. Yeah, and Jennifer, this app is already up and running. We know it will coincide with a separate app, like you mentioned there, uh, that will be available next week for Ontario residents to upload their vaccine certificates. But this one for non-essential businesses that is now up and running is both on the Apple App Store already, as well as the Google uh, Pay Store. It also accepts vaccine certificates from British Columbia and Quebec so far. The way it works is once a vaccine certificate is scanned, uh, the app responds with either a green check a yellow caution sign or a red X denoting an invalid vaccine certificate. But invalid results can be affected by things like vaccine certificates issued outside of Canada. Important to note too, uh, the app that will allow individuals to upload their certificates to create individual QR codes, that's expected to be up and running next Friday. Also, the app does not request user specific locations or collect information that might link visitors, businesses and specific locations. 
locations together. Here's more, though, from an Orange Theory Fitness franchise owner. Reality is a ton of small businesses have already closed. They've people have lost their houses. People have went bankrupt. It is a terrible situation, and it's really to, had a huge impact on small business across this entire country, all over the world. Um, you know, the vaccine passport here has been a fairly smooth process since we've implemented. Going back to operating at 100% capacity, being able to remove restrictions means a lot to us. It gives us at least a runway to get back to normalcy, to try and fight through and continue through this pandemic. And Jennifer and Jackie, still worth pointing out too, uh, that people will be able to upload paper vaccine certificates as well. So you don't have to use uh, this program once it's up and running uh, by next Friday. Back to you. All right, Mark, thank you. Those Canadians hoping for a quick day trip to the U.S. when the land border reopens next month will still need to present a negative PCR test at the border on their return. Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland is backing the requirement, saying the government plans to continue to follow the science around COVID-19 and err on the side of caution. Travelers will be able to take their PCR in Canada before crossing over if they plan on only being in America for less than three days. The U.S. plans on reopening the land border to fully vaccinated travelers in November. Still to come tonight, a state of emergency in Iqaluit. 8,000 residents have been told not to drink the water. We'll speak with the mayor and a volunteer bringing river water to the city's elders in about 30 minutes time. A 15-year-old girl has been charged with murder in the death of another teen back in the summer. 16-year-old Caden Francis was fatally shot on Antrim Crescent, that's near Kennedy and the 401, on July 3rd. Police say he was standing with friends when a black SUV drove up and one or more suspects opened fire. Caden's family tells CTV News he was a straight-A student who was playing basketball with friends steps from his home. They say they've been told the name of the suspect, but they don't know her. It hurts. My, my stomach, I cry at night to go to bed. Sometimes morning I wake up, I'm still, you know, that's the first thing is tears coming out my eye as a mom. Ball on school, off school, you know, very smart, tech savvy, you know, and sad that he was robbed of such a bright future. It's, it's really sad. The girl's name can't be released because of her age. We're hearing tonight from a woman who lost her parents in a deadly crash near High Park this week. Fatima and Valdemir Avila were killed on Tuesday afternoon when their car was hit from behind on Parkside Drive as they sat in traffic. They were well known in Little Portugal. 71-year-old Valdemar was a roofer while 69-year-old Fatima owned a salon for decades before closing it during the pandemic. Their daughter Ashley is angry but also says she forgives the driver responsible. It's so tough. We were just together on Thanksgiving and to get this news the day after is, it's heartbreaking. Life was cut short for them. They don't get to see my kids grow up anymore. My kids may not even remember because they're so young. Police say the BMW that hit the Avila's car was speeding, but so far no charges have been laid against the 38-year-old driver. The OPP are trying to identify the woman struck and injured on the 401 this afternoon. It happened in the eastbound express lanes of the 401 near Young Street around 1 o'clock. Police say the woman was hit by a tractor trailer. She was taken to hospital with life-threatening injuries. The highway was closed for about four hours as a result. Now investigators are trying to identify her so they can get in touch with her family. They say she's 30 to 40 years old. She was wearing gray pants, a brown wool sweater, white running shoes, white gloves, and has long, dark hair. CTV News has learned Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will unveil his new cabinet on either October 25th or 26th. Trudeau and the Liberals were elected to a third term with a minority government in last month's federal election. Some ministers lost their seats, meaning there will be new faces in cabinet, regardless of other potential changes. Coming up tonight, protesting hybrid learning. Ontario secondary school teachers take their message to the TDSB. We'll hear from the union's Toronto president next.
Canada's, Canada's Drag Race is back, baby. 12 Canuck queens are on the hunt to snatch that crown. So beautiful. I love this. So polish those claws. <laughs> gasp, everybody gasp. And sharpen that tongue, because y'all about to have a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Don't you wanna be, you wanna Canada's Drag Race, now streaming only on Crave. Brought to you in part by Shoppers Drug Mart. Shop beauty in-store and online. It doesn't matter who you're taking or where you're going. Your tires won't last forever. And now is the perfect time for new ones. Buy three tires and get the fourth free. Visit your Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram dealer for details. Are you suffering from depression and not able to work? Has your LTD claim been denied? You need a team of experienced disability lawyers who can fight for your rights and get the justice. And remember, you do not pay anything unless we win. Alum Law, your trusted disability lawyers. Anybody who would, uh, who is looking to kind of get into trading and, you know, it's a good icebreaker, I would definitely say Wealth Simple. Not only is the app super easy to use, it's a zero dollar commission fee, it's, a, it's an easy sell for sure. If I can do it, you can do it. I've been telling everyone, the secret to great teeth is having healthy gums. Crest Advanced Gum Restore fights plaque bacteria below the gum line, promotes gum healing, and restores gums back to health. Crest. Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation OSSTF members in TDSB high schools are protesting against hybrid learning. The model sees remotely participating students and in-person students mixed together in the same class with just one teacher instructing both groups simultaneously. Various OSSTF teachers and education workers delivered deputations at a TDSB meeting earlier today to highlight for the board why hybrid learning is just not working. Well, joining us now to chat more about this is Michelle Teixeira, OSSTF Toronto President, Behan Farhadi, a postdoctoral researcher at York University, and Shamila Shakil, a concerned parent in York Region. Thank you so much for joining us on CP24 tonight. Uh, Michelle, I'll start with you. Why is hybrid learning failing both students and teachers? Well, it's failing uh, students because uh, there's just an absolute inability to deliver the kind of engagement and interactivity that would be available in either a dedicated virtual learning environment or a dedicated in-person environment. And what we're hearing is, you know, students are feeling left behind. The students who are at home and not in the classroom, they're feeling that they're on the sidelines. Uh, um, and this is impacting teachers and how good they feel about doing their job. All right, and we also have uh, Shamila here. Shamila, you're a parent of uh, several kids. They're doing classes in, in, the, in this hybrid learning environment. Tell us about your situation and what it's been like. Um, so what I'm hearing from my kids is that the teachers are spending a lot of time trying to make this work. And they're being told that there's a learning curve and that, you know, eventually it's, the, it's, it's just going to work. Um, but they're spending a lot of time trying to fix the technology, trying to figure things out to make things work for both the students in the class and the students at home. And it's incredibly frustrating for them. And the, the students are picking up on it. They can tell that the teachers are frustrated. They can tell that it's just not working, especially for the kids at home. And um, it, I think even the students will tell you it's not fair um, to see their teachers have to struggle like that, you know, sometimes up to 45 minutes per class just to try to figure things out. Yeah, that sounds frustrating. Uh, I'm a parent. I've had kids uh, do virtual school, but now they're fully in, in person. So I can't imagine the teacher juggling both in one environment. That must be very difficult. Michelle, let me let me go back to you with this question. Since we know that there is in-person learning, there's also virtual learning. Why are we seeing hybrid learning at all? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, the TDSB told us back in the spring that this would be uh, minimized, that it's, it would be a response to an emergency situation. Uh, and, you know, their explanation for, for why it's so prevalent in 68.5% of secondary classes in the TDSB is timetabling limitations. And, you know, we just don't understand that because we know that uh, they could have put plans in place for a virtual school or for virtual hubs. 
they had the ability to do this. Uh, it's happening in other school boards. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we, we just don't know at this point, uh, other than the TDSB says it's impossible to do it otherwise. Hmm. Behan, I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, you've done a lot of research with children and virtual learning. What's your take on how this is going to play out and whether or not it's beneficial for anyone at this point? So hybrid learning started uh, in graduate programs. It was a niche method of delivery and has been found not to be successful even with adults uh, without really like an investment in the technology in a university lecture context. So to see this kind of rolled out to secondary students in a public education system with the explicit intent to cut costs um, is leading inevitably to this kind of uh, split attention model where students both virtually and in person lose out. Um, and, you know, we're not supporting teachers, and so it's going to impact our students as well. Yeah, I can certainly see that. Uh, Michelle, what is the OSSTF calling for right now? Well, right now we're calling for an immediate end to hybrid learning. Uh, we believe that uh, a smaller virtual school can be put in place or that virtual hubs can be put in place. If the issue is uh, timetabling, then virtual hubs can help with that. You can have uh, uh, neighboring schools, a, a bunch of schools get together uh, to create, you know, one section of that grade 10 English class or whatever it is so that you have enough students um, to be able to provide that dedicated virtual uh, experience. You know, it, it's, it takes some creativity, it definitely takes some resources, and it takes some money, um, but it can be done. We know that it can be. And what was the reception of uh, the board today? I, th I think we actually have a statement from the TDSB, but I know that members were giving their deputations today. What was your sense of uh, the communication that was being passed on today? Are they being receptive? I, I think, uh, judging from the, the trustees' questions, uh, the trustees are being very receptive to the delegations that they heard today. Uh, Ten of our members uh, provided very... Uh, heartwarming and thoughtful delegations. Many of them had tears, tears in their voice as they described the impact that hybrid learning was having, not only on them, uh, but, but their students. They talked mostly about the challenges that their students were facing as a result of feeling left out and isolated because of hybrid learning. Well, that sounds uh, pretty powerful, Michelle. I just want to read the statement put out by TDSB. I'll read it right now. Uh, they say, like many things during the pandemic, the TDSB has had to adjust to a difficult set of circumstances. The goal in August was to create as many virtual classes as possible. However, the total number of students and distribution across grades 9 to 12 made it impossible for local schools to timetable exclusively virtual classes for students prior to the first day of school on September the 9th. As a result, approximately 68% of secondary classes in the TDSB have some level of simultaneous learning taking place. While we had hoped there would be fewer simultaneous classes, it has enabled schools to maintain a range of courses for students learning both in person and learning remotely and stability in students' timetables. It's also important to note that the TDSB, which is facing declining enrollment this year, has already reached a ministry-required limit on deficit spending and does not have the resources to hire the additional staff that would be required to eliminate simultaneous learning while maintaining the current course selection. All right, a lot of words there. Uh, I want to get your thoughts, uh, Behan, on what you think the solution could be, given what you just heard there from the TDSB. So this is the first time I'm hearing TDSB actually announce the number. Uh, so the public pressure has been working, but we still don't have a lot of transparency so that we can make thoughtful recommendations. I know a lot of the schools, just anecdotally, are concentrated in already struggling communities. It's an equity issue. And so this, uh, you know, this conversation around administration and timetabling, um, you're having students timetabled perhaps in the courses of their first choice, but they're not getting a quality education. So I want to suggest that we really consider um, quality over quantity when it comes to this year's pandemic education. And Michelle, when it comes to which te teachers are getting saddling with these hybrid classes, is this all random? 
to a certain extent, it's random. It's dependent on the courses that students selected. But again, it's happening in 68.5% of the classes. So the majority of teachers are dealing with this. Um, and it's happening across a variety of classes. Uh, it's happening in experiential classes. It's happening in phys ed classes, dance classes, science classes where students can't participate in the labs. It, it's happening it, just broadly across the system. Wow. And Shamila, I want to end uh, this panel with you. Oh, have you noticed any changes in, in the motivation of your kids when they talk about school and learning these days? Absolutely. I mean, I think um, just the longer class times, because the ministry mandated only two courses per day, um, we have two and a half hours of each class. Um, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then all the kids are together for lunch, and the kids are exhausted. Um, both my boys, who have pretty good energy levels, are they're they're already done. Like they're just saying, mm. you know, we can't do this anymore. Um, so definitely that. I think they're not sleeping as well. They're definitely not eating as well too. That's what I'm hearing from a lot of parents is that kids are finding it hard to balance this kind of schedule. Um, and you know, I, I think that it's just it's it's just frustrating for all of them because they they can see that it's just not working. And they're they're just picking up on so much anxiety and stress. Um, it's not fair to anybody. I hope things improve uh, for you, Shamila, as well as for you, Michelle. Uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there tonight. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. Behan, Shamila, and Michelle, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And coming up tonight, we'll tell you how volunteers are coming together to help Afghan newcomers to Canada. We need to settle this cop versus firefighter thing once and for all. I once ran into a fire, carried out a woman, and then went back in to rescue one of my crew. I uncovered a Russian FSB safe house. Two Russian agents tried to kill me. Now we know cops are better than firefighters. Get into an all new episode of The Rookie, Sunday at 10 8 Mountain, only on CTV. Then stream anytime on CTV.ca and the CTV app. This Friday comes the unbelievable true story from the studio that brought you The Revenant and the director of Gladiator. The truth will prevail. The Last Duel, only in theaters Friday. Did you floss today? Use the Salka brush for healthy gums. Flossing simplified, no strings attached. Purchase the Canadian made Salka brush and mail in for a free travel pouch. See package in store for details and get a handle on healthy gums. What did it feel like when Peter, Jerry and Marco won over $75,000 with Proline? Winning with OLG brings out all the feels. Man, it's time to come home. It's time to come home to these fans. The Raptors expect you to play at home this upcoming season. This is a new era. This building has a... Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Diamond and Diamond Lawyers. 1-800-567-HURT. A group of volunteers who helped Syrian refugees resettle in Canada in 2015 are now working to support Afghan newcomers. Lifeline Afghanistan is organizing the volunteer efforts in Toronto to provide food, clothes and other basic needs for Afghan refugees. Canada has welcomed more than 2,500 Afghans since the Taliban took over in the summer. The federal government has committed to resettling 40,000 people from Afghanistan with the Syrians. You didn't have to go through a process to prove you were a refugee. If you were a Syrian, you were uh, prima facie a refugee. Canada set up temporary um, 
processing sites in places where the refugees were. That helped enormously. They relaxed some of the processes in terms of the requirements for documentation. And most importantly, they set targets for um, privately sponsored refugees. The group estimates 30 to 40 percent of the Afghan refugees will end up in Toronto. More than 1,000 people have already reached out offering to help sponsor people as they arrive. Coming up tonight, a state of emergency in Iqaluit. 8,000 residents have been told not to drink the water. We'll speak with the mayor and a volunteer bringing river water to the city's elders when CP24 tonight continues. Chums a $100,000 cash at her stash in. $10,000 every week. Take the easy 500 or stash it for a chance at the weekly 10 grand. Cash it or stash it. Chum 104.5. The price is right. Now is the time to sell your gold. Bring me your gold jewelry, your gold coins, your gold bars, even your broken gold, even your gold teeth. All of the jewelry pays the most for your gold. All of the jewelry.ca. Oh, yeah. It's one big prize after another in the Princess Margaret Home Lottery. Don't miss the incredible $6.6 .6 million grand prize, our world-famous early bird prize, plus turn a getaway into every day with the $1.3 million Blue Mountain Grand Prize. There's over 2,700 square feet for you to call home. Nothing has been left out, including $100,000 cash. Buy now at princessmargaretlotto.com. Well Simple is great because you can start in low, they don't charge you for commission fees, and it just made the process of trading a lot less intimidating. That's the beauty of it. <coughs> you can't shut down the neighbors, but you can shut down your toughest cold and flu symptoms with NyQuil Complete. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head so you can rest. Medicine. Rolex, 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 my cash for your used or new Rolexes. Bring me your Submariners, your Yacht Masters, your GMTs, your Dates or your Date Justs. Oliver Jewelry pays the highest prices for Rolexes. OliverJewelry.ca. Oh, yeah. What if I want a run with hills that I only have to run up, not back down? Ready for hill number two, Peloton? What about half intervals, half arms? And I only have half an hour to do it. Heart rate stays up. We're moving to the mat. Keep it up. What if I just need time to clear my head? However you want to work out, challenge accepted. Start your 30-day home trial. New tread purchases only. Terms apply. I just made $25,000 selling a million dollar house. Sure, I know they'd rather use my fees towards their dream home. More towards their kids' college fund. But this lifestyle, it doesn't pay for itself. Skip the high commission with New Era Real Estate. Did you know cold viruses often start in the nose before they spread and make you really sick? To help stop a cold from getting worse, try Vicks Early Defense Nasal Spray. When used at the first sign of a cold, Vicks Early Defense traps blocks and removes cold viruses at the source. To help stop a cold from spreading and getting worse, always have Vicks Early Defense Nasal Spray on hand. From Vicks, trusted for cold and flu symptom relief for over 125 years. See you Saturday. Here we go, hey, 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 here we go. Let's get together, here we go. We can't do it alone, here we go. Let's get together, here we go, hey. How doers get more done? I used to think PTSD was just a part of the job, but not today.